So here is a quick recap of some of the concepts that we have learnt in discrete mathematics and engineering mathematics, right? So uh, the reason I'm doing a quick recap is for the interest of those students who may not have gone through these concepts yet. So, so that you know what a set is, you know what a function is, you know what a relation is. But this will just be a recap. It will not be a thorough dive deep into these concepts. Because we have covered these concepts in discrete mathematics and engineering mathematics in lots of detail. You have spent tens of hours, almost close to a hundred hours just covering some of these concepts, right? So for, in the interest of time, I'll quickly recap these concepts. Anything you don't understand, please let us know. We'll show you, we'll give you pointers to the same concepts in discrete mathematics and engineering mathematics, okay? So the first concept is the concept of a set. Again, many of these concepts you may have learnt in your 11th, 12th grade also, right? So what is a set? Simply speaking, set is a collection of set is a collection of distinct items or distinct objects, right? Distinct is important. It's a collection of distinct objects or distinct items. Why is the keyword distinct important? Because sets cannot have the same item repeating. So there are no repetitions in a set, right? So there are no repetitions in a set, right? So for example, let's assume you have a set like this. This is not a set because one is repeating itself. While on the other hand, this is a set of three numbers. This is not a set because you can't have an item repeating itself, right? There is a concept called as multi sets where items can repeat. But in the general definition of a set, items cannot repeat, okay? Then there is this term called as size or cardinality, okay? The size of a set or cardinality of the set is the number of elements that are there. For example, let's assume this is set S, right? So we say the size of set S, we write it with two vertical bars or we call this a cardinality of the set is equal to three because there are three items here, right? Very simple concepts. Similarly, imagine if I have a set of alphabets A, B, C, so on, so forth, up to Z. Let's call this set as S dash, right? The cardinality of S dash or the size of S dash is 26 because there are 26 alphabets, uh, uppercase alphabets in English, right? Very simple concepts here. And for to understand sets pictorially, right? To understand sets visually or pictorially, we often use Venn diagrams like this. Probably things that you have seen in your, uh, in your ninth grade or 10th grade onwards, right? Again, we have covered all of them in discrete mathematics just for your information, right? So imagine if I have set A and set B, what is A union B? Everything that is there in this set or in this set. That's what is the concept of union. What is A intersection B? A intersection B is basically all the, all the points. So there could be multiple points here or multiple objects here. Everything that is there in this region, everything that is there in this region is called the intersection of the set, okay? Again, I'm just giving you a quick recap any concept that we need in addition to this recap, as and when we encounter it, I'll again discuss it in theory of computation, right? If there is some concept that I've not covered here, don't worry. Whenever we use a mathematical concept, I will give you a quick overview if I've not covered as part of this recap video, right? So that's perfectly okay. I'll quickly give a recap and I'll also show you pointers to concepts in discrete mathematics so that if you want to go back and read the concept in discrete mathematics in detail, you will be able to go through that, okay? So, so that, so that, so that you are not blocked on any concept. Even if you have not covered discrete mathematics and engineering mathematics yet, you should be able to understand most of the concepts in theory of computation. Wherever you are not able to, please let us know. We'll anyway connect you, connect you back to the concepts in discrete math. Okay. So the next concept is called as Cartesian product. Okay. Very important concept uh, that we will use a lot that we'll use a lot in uh, in uh, in theory of computation, right? So Cartesian product. So imagine if you're given two sets, okay? Imagine if I'm given a set A, which is one comma two, and I'm given a set B, which is let's say A, B, C, right? Then the Cartesian product, then the Cartesian product of these two sets is, I basically create these pairs, okay? Cartesian product A cross B. Cartesian product is also an another set, but this set consists of pairs of elements. It will consist of pairs of element like this. It will consist of pairs of element like this, such that the first element here, I'll place one and I'll place A here. Okay, this first element comes from here, second element comes from here. Similarly, 1B, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, 2C, right? So it is, it is, 
it, it is those odd so these are often referred to as ordered pairs or tuples right these are often referred to as ordered pairs or tuples right again we have seen the same concepts in databases also just fii if you have not gone through databases that's okay you'll be able to make sense of everything so this is what a cartesian product basically means so mathematically speaking a cartesian product is a set which consists of ordered pairs a comma b such that consists of ordered pairs a comma b such that a belongs to a and b belongs to b right so these are called as cartes uh, these are called as ordered pairs or tuples that's what a cartesian product is i see basically you are multiplying one with a sorry you are combining one with a combining one with b one with c two with a two with b two with c all such pairs that you can construct are part of your a cross b right so that that's what your cartesian product is now there is a concept called as a relation okay the third concept is called as a relation between two sets a relation r between two sets is nothing but a subset of the cartesian product it is nothing but a so you suppose if you take these two sets right a and b so you can define a relation between a and b by taking any subset of this set right for example suppose imagine and again this is pictorially represented like this right suppose let's assume i have set a which consists of 1 2 3 let's assume i have set b which consists of a b c pictorially or diagrammatically you can represent a relation as connecting dots so when you have this when you have this connection from 1 to a it implies that 1 comma a is present in your relation similarly you can have 1 to b which means 1 comma b is also present in your relation similarly you can have 2c which means 2 comma c is also present in your relation there could be some some elements here which which are not connect which are not related to anything in b there could be elements in b also which are not related to anything in a that's perfectly all right for example if you notice this this relation r right this is a subset of a cross b because in a cross b you will have 1a 1b 1c 1d 2a 2b 2c 2d 3a 3b 3c 3d in a cartesian product right amongst all those so the 12 pass the 12 ordered pairs there three here and four here hence there are 12 pairs that it can form of these 12 pairs i have taken a set of just three pairs and that forms the relation here right that's what a relation is a relation is simply a subset of cartesian product okay now the next concept is the concept of a function the fourth concept is the concept of a function now what is a function a function is a special type of relation a function is a special type of relation okay it's a special type of relation again it's very easy to understand these concepts from diagrams right for example imagine i have a set a i have a set b and let's assume i have a function between these two sets Let's assume, I, let's assume I have a function between these two sets. Just like relation, just like relation, it is also a subset of the Cartesian product, but there are more conditions. For example, in relations, if you notice, one can be connected to two items. This is called as mapping. One can be mapped to both A and B. In the case of function, given any, given any element here, it can only be mapped to one distinct element. It cannot be mapped to another element. For example, something if it's also mapped to another element this is not allowed in a function but on the other hand on the on the other hand two elements can be mapped to the same output right so this is allowed so this is allowed this is allowed same same element cannot be mapped to two distinct elements okay that's what a function is so function is a special type of relation so let, let's write this down right it's a special type of relation where if a comma b belongs to the relation right and a comma c also belongs to the relation then look at this if this is true if this whole thing is true then b equals to c here again a belongs to set a again this is true for all a that belongs to set a and for all b comma c that belongs to set b so what is it saying if i have an element which is mapping to two elements okay then these two elements have to be the same that's what it's saying right if a maps to b and a maps to c then b has to be equal to c which means b and c cannot be two distinct elements they have to be the same element okay on in other words again it's very easy to understand this pictorially right from a diagrammatic viewpoint if you have a point if you have an element of set a it cannot map to two elements it can only map to one distinct element what we are writing here is the same thing that we have seen pictorially in a mathematical equation form okay 
so that's cool so the next concept here is the concept of graphs okay again you may have encountered graphs at multiple places right we have used concepts of graphs in data structures algorithms we use them in discrete mathematics we have also used them in databases we'll use them in computer networks tons of places right a graph is basically a set of vertices and edges at the end of the day, at the end of the day this is what it is so again pictorial it's very easy to understand these concepts from diagrams so you have a bunch of vertices and of course you can have connections between these vertices right you can have these connections so these these vertices so these dots or these circles are called as vertices these these uh, lines are called as edges and we say that this vertex is connected to this vertex or this node is connected to this node right so th this is what a graph is again graphs are a big topic in themselves we have co we have covered them in discrete mathematics in lots of detail here i'm just quickly recapping these concepts because we'll end up using them in theory of computation okay again a graph can also have so these are called as undirected edges okay these are called as undirected edges because there is there is no direction to this edge imagine this is vertex 1 this is vertex 2 you can go from vertex 1 to vertex 2 or vertex 2 to vertex 1 that's why they are undirected edges if i place an arrow mark here these are referred to as directed edges so you could if if a graph has directed edges it's called a directed graph if a graph has undirected edges it's called an undirected graph if you have a directed edge it means you can only go from v1 to v2 not the other way back okay so that's the concept of a graph now there is one more concept which is very important in the con in the context of uh, uh, in the context of uh, theory of computation this concept is called sequences this concept is called a sequences actually we do encounter lots of sequences if you think about it let's take this sequences are often represented using these braces okay simple braces or simple brackets look at this so this if if i keep writing this up to z this is actually a sequence right this is a sequence of alphabets this is a sequence of alphabets there is a there is an order here remember in the case of sets look at this if i have a set if i have a set a b c d up to z the order doesn't matter this set is equal to having z uh, y so on so forth d c b a the order is not important in this case both these sets are the same in the case of a sequence the order is important this is the sequence of alphabets similarly uh, 1 1 2 3 5 8 right so on so forth this is the sequence of fibonacci numbers right we might have encountered fibonacci numbers right what is a fibonacci number this number is the sum of the previous two numbers this number is the sum of the previous two numbers this number is the sum of previous two numbers so this is the this is the sequence of fibonacci numbers so in in the case of a sequence the ordering is important unlike a set okay now how do you define sequences mathematically a sequence you can think of it as a function you can think of a sequence as a function from natural numbers from natural numbers it's a function from natural numbers two objects two objects for example for example you can think of this as saying that okay from okay let me write this down okay my first fibonacci number is this my second fibonacci number is this my third fibonacci number is this my fourth fibonacci number my fifth fibonacci number my sixth fibonacci number so if you think of them this sequence this sequence you can think of this sequence as a mapping or a function from these numbers from you can think see if you think about it pictorially right this is one set this is a set of natural numbers here is the sequence so you can think of this as a function right so this is your first alphabet in english this is your second alphabet this is your third alphabet this is your fourth alphabet this is your 26th alphabet right so you can think of a sequence as a function from natural numbers to objects so in this case the sequence here the sequence here again the po again why is it why are we calling it a function and that to from natural numbers because there is an ordering here in layman's term there is a specific ordering and how do we enforce that ordering we say this is the first number this is the second number this is the third number this is the fourth number by saying mathematically that it's a function from natural numbers the moment you say it's a function from natural numbers you can't have two first numbers you can only have one distinct first number okay but because you say this okay uh, there is also one very important aspect of sequences unlike sets unlike sets there can be repetitions unlike sets there can be repetitions 
repetitions are allowed in sequences repetitions are allowed in sequences they are not allowed in sets right in a typical set there are no repetitions but in a sequence repetitions are allowed so if you think about it from a pictorial standpoint look at this what did we say mathematically it is a function from natural numbers to objects so imagine if i have these numbers okay and let's assume i have uh, a b c d etc my first number my first my first digit or my first object in the sequence can be a right my second object can be b my third object can be this my fourth object can be d my fifth object now my fifth object can again be a that's also a sequence my fifth object here can again be a for example let's write down a sequence like this right a b c d again a b c d a b c d this is a valid sequence okay look at this the this is the first object second object third object fourth object the fifth object and the first object are the same functions i love that right functions say if you look at the definition of what a function is two elements here can map to the same element here the single element here cannot map to two objects right so if you notice this 1 and 5 which which are, which are part of the set of natural numbers 1 and 5 can map to the same a so this is a valid sequence from the definition here right so a sequence if you want to think about it very mathematically it is a function from natural numbers to objects okay or you can think of it as a simple ordering the order is important right so sequences is again you can think of sequences as a special type of sets again they are not exactly sets they are actually functions to be more precise okay a sequence is a function or a mapping from natural numbers to objects because we have a specific ordering saying that this is the first number this is a second number so on so forth right so i hope this this recap gives you a basic understanding of the key concepts that we need in discrete mathematics which we will be using extensively in theory of computation